Good evening. Uh, I guess if you folks know that uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University has a, an incredible relationship with the UN. And we, we've had this Pathways program here for almost a decade now. And I guess we've had somewhere over 100 ambassadors from the UN that have come to address our students and our staff and faculty. And today we, we welcome the ambassador from the Republic of Korea, uh, Han Chung Hee. I think you'll find it very interesting. Uh, our Dr. Jason Scorzer will be our, uh, our person that will be interviewing the, interviewing the ambassador. And so with, with no further ado, Mr. Mr. Scorzer, you have it. Thank you, President thank you. Trucker. Thank you. And thank you, Ambassador Han, for joining us on this rainy New Jersey evening. Uh, I myself, would I drive this far to talk to me? I'm not sure. But uh, you do us great honor uh, in spending the evening with us. Uh, for those of you who are new to the UN Pathways program, I'll explain briefly uh, how we like to do things. Uh, the format of the evening will be a conversation between Ambassador Han and myself. Uh, I would ask all of you to turn your mobile phones off uh, because we will be uh, recording the proceedings and um, it's best not to have any interruptions. Uh, after we have our chat, we will open uh, the conversation to the entire group uh, and we'll invite you to ask questions uh, uh, of the ambassador. Uh, shall we begin? Yeah. Okay. Uh, ambassador Han, we always like uh, first to learn something about the person uh, we're meeting with. And our students are, are often particularly interested uh, in how our visitors entered uh, their career of diplomacy and how they've proceeded in that career. Thank you, uh, President of the uh, University, and also uh, Mr. Scorgia, uh, Vice Provost, to invite me. Uh, it's my great honor to be here at uh, this uh, prestigious university. Actually, uh, you know, when I uh, drove my car before I arrived here, I noticed that, you know, the Livingston, I, I, you recall the, you know, nearby uh, town, that Livingston was the town that I lived uh, 10 years ago <laughs> when I was working in you know different capacity in the New York. At that time, uh, I worked for uh, Kedo, K-E-D-O. Um, you are not familiar with this thing, but Korean Peninsula Energy Development Organization. At that time, uh, US, Korea, uh, Japan, and European Union was trying to build light water nuclear reactor in North Korea. Uh, but it's a long time ago. But you know that project has been terminated, unfortunately, because of North Korea's continued uh, you know, building up uh, nuclear weapons capability. But I think the reason why I mentioned this point, and I think this is related to what we'll discuss on the situation of the Korean Peninsula. Uh, so uh, you know that uh, reminiscence of my life uh, in, in, in this area uh, reflect me that uh, I think uh, it's, it's like a, almost a hometown in, in medicine, uh, this university. Uh, the reason I, uh, I'm, I was joining the you know, diplomatic uh, community in the Republic of Korea, uh, I got you know, major in uh, French in the university. And also, I noticed that uh, you know, Republic of Korea, uh, as you know, the history of Korea is uh, you know uh, the history of uh, turmoil and division, you know, all sufferings uh, with the, you know war and occupation and independence. So, uh, I believe that uh, uh, Korea should be, particularly you know, South Korea, uh, should have a lot of uh, you know challenging issue, you know, to surmount our national identity as well as uh, you know diplomatic challenges we face vis-a-vis uh, -vis, you know first of all North Korea uh, and also international challenges and also we have a lot of you know development issue and cultural exchange issue so I'm very happy to be representing the government of the Republic of Korea uh, to uh, to the international society uh, not only uh, you know just to promoting you know, our uh, position or policy, but at the same time, I'd like to share with uh, 
you know, international community how uh, Republic of Korea, South Korea has been developing, uh, you know, how and what elements are, you know, critical in achieving such, you know, miracle of Han River in such a short period of time, uh, like democracy, you know, education, uh, and also, you know, help of the United States, you know, with the Korea-US uh, alliance relationship. So I think uh, those kind of uh, uh, narrative uh, and uh, you know uh, history of Korea uh, will and also our experience will be a good uh, I think uh, message first of all to the United United States uh, because the uh, United States helped Korea and and make you know uh, Korea at, at this stage and at also same time to the developing countries in Africa. Uh, and Middle East and South America to uh, see the, you know, uh, what happened in Korea, you know, also can happen to their country. So I think this is the base of, you know, why I'm uh, joining a diplomatic community. Thank you. And um, uh, you've identified a number of, of, of your uh, broad diplomatic priorities representing um, uh, the Republic of Korea. But within the, the framework of the United Nations itself, does your mission have a particular set of issues or agenda items on, on which it is focusing? Uh, actually, uh, as you know, United Nations has three pillars, we call it. One is uh, peace security, second pillar is development, and third pillar is human rights. In those three areas, uh, Republic of Korea uh, has its own, you know, stake. First of all, peace security. Obviously, uh, you heard about, you know, what is going on in North Korea, right? They are uh, now, up to now, they had, I think, four rounds of uh, nuclear test and six rounds of uh, long-range missile launch. So this is a really clear and present danger. So we are now discussing uh, the new resolution to give you know, strong uh, sanction measures to North Korea and uh, to give a strong message to, the, to North Korea that you know, uh, without changing their policy uh, toward non-denuclearization, uh, uh, you know, they cannot survive. Uh, this is uh, what we are trying to do. I think uh, now we are on the verge of adopting new resolution in coming few days. I think uh, if, you, if you listen to the news, I think you will hear in few days about you know, new, really robust and strong uh, resolution. And this is a Security Council That's right, resolution. Security Council resolution. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, another, another thing is we are you know, going to you know, continuously engage in peacekeeping operation and peace building process. You know, peace building is a new concept in the United Nations to uh, bridging between uh, peacekeeping, like a PKO operation, and uh, development. So we need you know smooth transition from peace operation and crisis management toward the development. So this is a you know peace building uh, mechanism we call it. And Korea uh, was elected as a vice chair of the peace building commission. So we are working on it. Development side is quite important, you know. Uh, I'm not sure about the uh, adoption of sustainable development goal. Uh, we call it 17 goals. Uh, another word, we call it 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We adopted that SDG 17 goals last September in the United Nations with the you know, summit uh, meeting. Uh, uh, Korea assumed our, you know, uh, assumed as a president of ECOSOC, Economic and Social uh, Council of the United Nations uh, to implement this SDG. Uh, so this year is the first year after adoption, and we'll continue to engage. You know what is the best way to implement this SDG? Um, in 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 July we will have a high-level political forum (HLPF) we call it to check you know first year's performance and follow-up and review of the. SDG uh, will continue to lead this area, particularly like uh, you know, SDG. There are 17 goals which 
you know, complies of all important aspects of social, economic, and environmental uh, dimensions, like education, you know, health, uh, poverty eradication, and every uh, issue. But Korea is focusing on particularly like education, you know, uh, famous Korean brand. And secondly, uh, gender, gender equality, woman issue, and also uh, governance issue, uh, and uh, like rule of law institution building, and also like, uh, you know, helping uh, isolated and marginalized and vulnerable people, like, uh, you know, persons with disability. Uh, and also, we are focusing on rural development that uh, Korea uh, experienced a lot. You know how we overcome this poverty, you know, from almost nothing to this, uh, you know, abundance. Uh, so I think we have uh, some prioritized area in SDG, uh, but in overall, uh, we'll encourage you know a global uh, progress of the uh, sustainable development goal on on human rights aspect. Uh, Korea uh, is focusing on, you know, general improvement of human rights condition around the world, but particularly, uh, you know, uh, North Korea human rights situation is really, you know, uh, aggravating and aggravating, and uh, we will uh, raise awareness of this, you know, dire human rights situation in North Korea, and also humanitarian almost, you know, disaster. And uh, we will, together with uh, like-minded countries, uh, we will continue to raise this issue. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's stay with North Korea for a little while. Um, in, in the past, there has been difficulty in the UN Security Council uh, achieving really strong resolutions uh, against North Korea, in part because uh, the Chinese uh, have not always favored. Sometimes it was the Russians, but usually the Chinese. What is different now than how things have been in the past? Uh, as, I, as I told you, we adopted already four different resolutions on uh, North Korea nuclear and missile launch. We incrementally you know, uh, raised our uh, toughness on sanction measures. You know, starting from uh, almost 10 years ago, 2006, 2009, 2013, and you know now uh, uh, we are trying to have you know new uh, sanction measures. But you know this time uh, North Korea systematically and intentionally violating all previous sanction measures, and uh, we will continue to raise you know bar uh, much tougher than before i think uh, we are trying to go to you know new, new dimensions including even like you know sectoral ban uh, we are still working on uh, with the united states and like minded countries but china uh, after they got you know successive uh, provocation first uh, you know uh, january 6 uh, nuclear test followed by missile launch, you know, a month later, uh, then uh, I think uh, that changed uh, the, the mindset of the China, and otherwise uh, we cannot, you know, control the, this kind of reckless drive uh, of North Korea to uh, advance their nuclear capability and uh, missile, uh, you know, capability, almost in a stage of, you know, operationalization. So, uh, you know, this is general consensus, but there is ups and downs, you know, how we can get new element, uh, really top painful uh, measures uh, inside of the, you know, new UN Security Council resolution. So we are, as I said, you know, we are almost, you know, final stage to uh, be announced in next uh, few days, hopefully. Uh, North Korea's uh, intention is quite clear. You know, they would like to get some kind of you know, de facto recognition as a de facto nuclear weapon state, which is uh, prohibited by you know, non-proliferation treaty. Uh, but they will continue to be, you know, be a member of a uh, you know, joining nuclear state uh, uh, you know, to keep their, uh, I think, uh, regime survival, we call it. Uh, but I think we have to give a strong message that 
uh, with this continuous uh, violation of the uh, UN Security Council and uh, continued provocation will definitely touch uh, their survival and uh, you know, in a negative way. Uh, so this is a you know, clear uh, message we are trying to give to North Korea. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's working in that way. Uh, you know, it's difficult to say specific you know, measures, but uh, we are going to you know, much tougher and uh, even going to new dimensions of, uh, you know, compared to you know, all uh, in the history of sanction regime in the United Nations Security Council. Thank you. I, I think when we, when we look at the strategic priorities of the Re Republic of Korea, of South Korea, ultimately the goal is peaceful reunification. Are we able to understand what the strategic goal of North Korea is? Or is it merely regime survival? Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, after division of Korean Peninsula that happened after independence uh, you know, in 1948 and uh, 1945, Mm, North Korea was occupied by communist, you know, uh, regime, and South Korea was occupied by, you know, democratic uh, regime. And uh, there was attempt, you know, to uh, unify at the time, you know, after independence, but it was not uh, possible uh, because of, you know, uh, ambition of North Korean, uh, you know, uh, communist regime. So. Uh, but as you see in now, you know, after 70 years of, you know, division, uh, we see, uh, you know, stark difference between North and South Korea, you know, in terms of political situation, as you know, you know, uh, totalitarian regime and our liberal democratic regime society. Uh, in terms of economic achievement, uh, you know, uh, South Korean uh, GNP, you know, GDP is almost uh, 44 times bigger than North Korea. Uh, per capita income wise, uh, uh, South Korean uh, GNP per capita is uh, 22 times bigger than uh, North Korea. It's, it's quite, you know, sharp uh, difference. Uh, you know, we, we started same point at, at until I think uh, 70s, early 70s, North Korean economic power was uh, bigger than, you know, South Korea. But with the uh, continuous, you know, free competition and liberal market economy with the democratization uh, made, you know, this stark difference. So I think uh, uh, the, our ultimate goal for uniting, you know, two Koreas together, we have a uh, uh, 45 million at the time, uh, or almost 50 million in South Korea and 25 million in North Korea, uh, should be united in the in the uh, hopefully in the near future. Uh, but you know the approach, the the system uh, we have to achieve, we have to get eventually, is quite clear. You know, uh, as you as you know, uh, you know there is a freedom and democracy, you know, and, and free choice. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, the, the avenue we are trying to achieve definitely. Uh, but, you know, we, it's difficult to change the status quo uh, with the specific policy. But uh, we are continuously saying to the international society that, uh, you know, it's difficult to tolerate this, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the pain and uh, suffering and perseverance of North Korean people in humanitarian uh, and human right, you know, uh, condition. So uh, we are asking to the international community, you know, what kind of system or, or political, uh, you know, undertaking, undertaking is necessary for peaceful and prosperous uh, all Korean community, you know, um, in, in the future? This is a fundamental question we can ask. But as far as North Korea is concerned, uh, they are trying to, uh, first of all, you know, as you know, Korean War, right? This is aggression, armed attack from North Korea in 1950, 
for three years. Uh, but after that, even now, they are continuously trying to you know, occupy South Korea in their terms, like a communist country. But recently, they uh, noticed and realized the stark difference of uh, national power, as I explained, you know, 44 times uh, uh, you know, less than South Korean uh, capacity. So recently, they are very nervous about possible you know, uh, absorption or integration by the you know, initiative of South Korea. Uh, but I think uh, the reason why they are developing nuclear weapons and long-range missile, uh, the first purpose is to, you know, to give a, a signal to the United States you know, to, to intimidate them and ask them to come to the negotiation table to make like a peace treaty uh, with the United States uh, so that they can get some recognition about their regime. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, another reason why they are developing nuclear weapons is to, uh, you know, delay or, you know, block possible absorption from South Korea, you know. I think this is uh, their, uh, their sense of, you know, urgency or uh, vulnerability vis-a-vis -vis South Korea. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, this is why they are continuously advancing and advancing their nuclear capability so that, uh, you know, the, the other side, like United States or China and South Korea can feel that you know, this is real and dangerous stake, and 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 it's difficult to you know just to neglect or you know even uh, invade or, or deal with North Korea. So they would like to increase their ante uh, as, as a bargaining chip uh, with the South Korea and the United States. That makes sense. Uh, you mentioned the Korean War, uh, which technically isn't over. The, the status is a truce at the present time. So uh, for those of you keeping score at home, uh, we are still at war with North Korea. Uh, let, me, let me clear that particular point. It's a little bit you know, controversial in terms of uh, international law uh, or diplomacy or international security. Usually, uh, if there is war and there is a ceasefire or truce, you know, we call it Armistice Agreement that was uh, agreed in 1953. Uh, but in, in Korean case, it's quite unique. Usually, after Armistice Agreement or ceasefire, there is a peace agreement in a few months or something like that, uh, within you know, uh, less than a year. But in Korean case, it was really difficult to find out any meaningful peace treaty after the Korean War because of you know, stark difference of system and hostility. Uh, and we tried one uh, you know, political uh, 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 dialogue in Geneva in 1954, but there was not successful to achieve any meaningful uh, unification-related formula. Uh, but in after this kind of you know, armistice regime or armistice agreement is passing up to now, you know, more than 70, almost 70 years. Uh, we believe that this is uh, you know, de facto uh, you know, uh, peace arrangement in, in addressing or handling the situation, secret situation of the Korean Peninsula. Uh, so we, we don't want you know, art, artificially or arbitrarily changing the you know, status quo. Uh, this is exactly what North Korea is trying to, you know, get a peace treaty with the uh, United States, uh, because they think that, you know, this is unstable, um, and if they got peace treaty with the United States to replace this armistice agreement, uh, will be a good opportunity to get, you know, rec political recognition about their leadership and regime. Uh, but we should be careful, uh, you know, in in. International law students, they are thinking that the armistice agreement, you know, armistice regime is technically still war. Uh, but, you know, like uh, 60s and 70 years of uh, armistice regime is, is not 
that much, you know, technically war. I think we can say this is a, a regime uh, to maintain peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, without this kind of, you know, elimination of, you know, uh, abandoning of nuclear ambition of North Korea, uh, uh, it's, it's not, you know, sustainable peace. Even though we have just, you know, signed treaty on peace, you know, this is a. Uh, the, the piece of paper on like a peace treaty, you know, cannot guarantee genuine peace on the Korean Peninsula. What is the important thing is it's not just you know modality of uh, you know instrument like whether it is armistice agreement or peace agreement, but what is important is uh, you know genuine intention of North Korea to abandon their nuclear ambition and then come up with uh, as a, as a reformed. And, and, and openness. Uh, this is, uh, you know, our position. Mm. Thank you. Um, of course, the United States is, is, uh, continues to be very concerned with the security uh, of South Korea. Um, many of our students will know, but some might not, uh, that the U.S. maintains some 30,000 troops uh, in uh, South Korea, most of them near the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. Uh, and even today, there, I believe, are joint training operations going on uh, with tens of thousands of, of uh, American soldiers and close to 200,000 South Korean soldiers. Um, those, I don't know what you call them, those. Uh, um, deployments, uh, those training exercises, uh, historically, I think, have been limited to a self-defense posture, uh, how to respond to potential North Korean incursions. But this year, there's, there's something different going on, uh, or so I've read, um, uh, training that keeps in mind the potential of a first strike. Uh, I don't think uh, this joint military exercise between uh, United States and Republic of Korea is uh, trying to uh, be, you know, a, a sort of, you know, proactive or, you know, assertive uh, readiness uh, in the future. This is a purely defensive nature. You know, we've been starting this joint exercise quite a long period of time, you know. Uh, because of, as I said, uh, continued hostility from uh, North Korea to attack or you know, provoke uh, in many different ways to the South Korea. So uh, we, uh, we need the you know, defense readiness uh, on the Korean Peninsula. We've been working with the United States to hold this kind of annual uh, you know, uh, military exercise. To, uh, to cope with any possible attack or, or provocation from North Korea. Uh, so this is a purely uh, you know, uh, uh, defensive nature. We, we don't want you know, any, uh, any you know, offensive or different nature on, on any uh, uh, exercises uh, you know, before and currently and in the future. One, uh, as I mentioned, you know, military exercise. One uh, element I'd like to emphasize regarding U.S.-Korea, you know, alliance relationship. Mm, this was started from uh, obviously, you know, 1953, uh, or, or starting from 50, when there is an armed attack from North Korea. Uh, at the time, uh, United Nations adopted uh, a resolution to send uh, you know UN troops to uh, forces to uh, Republic of Korea to defend the country uh, after, uh, for like uh, you know three or four or three years uh, you know fighting there is uh, I think uh, more than uh, 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 30 or 40 50 thousand you know uh, US soldiers died and if you chance to go to the you know uh, memorial, Korean War Memorial in Washington, uh, you will see uh, near the, you know, uh, in, in uh, Lincoln uh, Memorial Park, that you will see the wording that, you know, uh, freedom is not free, you know. Uh, so uh, I think uh, this kind of uh, 
sacrifice of U.S. soldiers in, in Korean soil uh, was the base of, I think, uh, you know, development in terms of democracy or you know, market economy. And uh, that proved, I think, uh, only almost single case in, in the world that you know, U.S.'s choice was right you know, in, in protecting the Republic of Korea uh, in, in that much difficult situation in, in Korean War and uh, made this uh, South Korea you know, uh, today uh, in terms of you know, uh, prosperous and also free society um, with full pressed democracy. So I think uh, this is critical point that uh, why uh, we have to continue this kind of alliance relations between Korea and the United States so that uh, you know, we can aim uh, f in, the, in the future the possible change of the Korean Peninsula, hopefully th toward the uh, unification. Uh, this was joint vision. You know, we adopted 2009-2010. Uh, uh, two, two countries will continue to cooperate to uh, achieve, you know, uh, to make this democracy and market economy to be expanded, you know, whole uh, entire uh, 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 Korean Peninsula. So I think uh, this joint vision uh, has been uh, working quite well and will continue in the future. Uh, and in fact, there, there is anticipated uh, a round of discussions between the Republic of Korea and the United States concerning a uh, possible missile defense system, which theoretically would be able to uh, target North Korean uh, ballistic missiles either in the atmosphere or just outside of the atmosphere. Uh, is, is this uh, sort of system something that the government of, of South Korea wants to have, that capability? Yeah. Regarding uh, you know missile defense system, uh, as you might know, uh, you know current North Korea missile capability is really dangerous and and diverse. You know they are developing a short range missile, uh, several hundred kilometers, Scud and Nodong. Uh, Nodong is uh, you know mid range like uh, 1,000 2,000 kilo kilometers uh, distance. And also, we call it, you know, Depodong uh, is uh, uh, intercontinental uh, ballistic missile (ICBM), long-range missile. They have a series of, you know, full set. You know, <laughs> like uh, when you uh, there is a you know buyer. You know, when you uh, have contract with you know a country uh, to the like a possible uh, purchasing country from Middle East, or if you can open the you know suitcase, there is a whole set, you know, from short-range missile to the, you know, ICBM. Uh, so this is uh, what, what is happening in North Korea. So what we need is we need a, you know, self-defense mechanism so that we can cope with any possible uh, launch or provocation uh, from North Korea. So we need a, you know, multi-layered uh, missile defense system. We've been developing, uh, we call it Korean type of you know, missile defense system. We've been developing uh, you know, many different, our, uh, our indigenous technology to defend any possible missile attack from North Korea. Uh, but I think uh, it's difficult to catch all mid and long range missiles, even though it was not directly uh, aimed as, as South Korea. But you know, we, we have to ready to, you know, uh, to defend our uh, country in, in any launch of, you know, different uh, uh, type of uh, missile. So uh, third, we, we call it, uh, you know, terminal uh, high altitude area defense missile system uh, is uh, the one we are discussing with the United States to introduce to the Korean Peninsula so that we can uh, increase, uh, you know, the level of protection from any possible, uh, any different range of, you know, possible launch from uh, North Korea. This is what we are discussing. I think this is the right, you know, direction for the, you know, 
uh, self defense of uh, you know South South Korea in in coping with uh, this unprecedented uh, danger uh, from North Korea. Okay. Let's let's talk a little bit about bilateral relations uh, between North and South Korea on the most basic level. When representatives from the two countries talk to each other, who is doing that talking? Where are they? Are, are they doing that talking? Because you don't have embassies, do you? Mm, we, we, if we have, there is a you know, willingness to talk bilaterally, there are several talks. One is a you know, senior level, high level talk, sometimes in a summit meeting, sometimes ministerial level meeting to talk about you know, general issues, uh, overall important issues, uh, military, uh, and economic and you know uh, cultural and any issue. Second uh, thing is uh, you know military talk uh, to talk about you know demarcation or you know forces and many things. Third one is humanitarian issue uh, like uh, you know uh, family uh, re uh, reunion of uh, you know uh, divided uh, families and also humanitarian assistance by rice or food you know. Uh, there are many different uh, uh, level of uh, talk. We use sometimes, you know, Kaesong, uh, where Kaesong Industrial Complex was there. Uh, recently, I'm not sure you heard about that. That Kaesong Industrial Complex was closed, unfortunately. Maybe you could just say a little bit about about that what one? that okay. project was. Okay, uh, that project was quite interesting. Uh, you know, in terms of the magnitude. Uh, and level of cooperation between two Koreas. That was started uh, slightly over uh, 10 years um, with an idea that uh, combining, first of all, uh, South Korea's strong technology and management uh, and, and, and advanced you know, uh, skill together with uh, North Korea's uh, labor, uh, cheap you know, and not that much skilled, but I think a very uh, shrewd you know, skill. And we combine uh, those two dimensions in, in Kaesong Industrial Complex, this special economic zone. Uh, so uh, now, after you know, slightly over 10 years, we achieved the level of uh, 54,000 North Korea workers, you know, which was uh, recently, until recently, they are working. Uh, South Korean company who joined the Kaesong Industrial Complex, you know, uh, usually small and medium, uh, you know, companies. It, it was, uh, I think, 124 companies was working there. Uh, the total uh, revenue, profit that North Korea got, like, you know, mostly like a salary of workers, its total amount was almost uh, 120 uh, million dollars a year. Uh, but this is a you know, symbol of a uh, joint project and cooperative project between two Koreas. This, was, this has been done a um, little bit up and down, but you know, we, we didn't touch this Gaesong Industrial Complex, even though there is some you know, provocation from North Korea, uh, like a, you know, shelling of Yeonpyeong Island in, in Korea several uh, years ago, because uh, we believe that you know, this should continue uh, uh, as, as a symbol of you know, fundamental cooperation between two Koreas. I think uh, this could be uh, as, as a signal that I think in the future, after unification, you know, this kind of joint project can continue. But unfortunately, uh, with this continued provocation by North Korea, with uh, you know, far-reaching advancement of uh, missile and nuclear capability, uh, we cannot, we don't have any other choice, you know, but to stop uh, this uh, industrial complex. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, this is an inevitable choice from our government uh, to close down this uh, Kaesong industrial complex because uh, there is some possibility that, you know, some or considerable uh, amount or portion of this $120 million could be diverted to the, you know, possible uh, you know, development of uh, missile and, and, and nuclear capability. So this is very uh, unfortunate. Uh,
But if I continue to your answer your question is uh, we are using that industrial complex as a meeting venue for inter-Korean dialogue. Sometimes we call it Panmunjom. This is, uh, you know, uh, armistice regime. Uh, there is, uh, you know, a hole in the, in the demarca demarcation line between uh, two Koreas. We use that uh, venue for uh, the meeting. Uh, but you know, venue is venue is okay. We can we can choose. Uh, sometimes North Korean delegation can come to the South Korea. Sometimes you know, participating in like uh, you know, sports game like Asian game, uh, or vice versa. In in terms of uh, summit meeting, we had uh, two times, uh, 2000 and 2007. That happened uh, always in in North Korea because. Uh, you know, North Korean leader was very afraid <laughs> about coming to South Korea, you know, because of uh, their, uh, you know, vulnerable feeling uh, about security. Uh, this is exactly what happened so far. Mm -hmm. So even in this period of, uh, shall I say, intensified um, uh, feelings, still communication yeah. between the two countries goes on. Okay. I'd like to, um, to give our students and, and other guests a, a chance to, to ask questions, but, but first, I'd like to, to lighten the, the somberness of the mood just slightly. Uh, I've, I've been to Korea several times. It is one of my favorite countries in, in the world. It, it's, it has beautiful landscape, it has beautiful people, it has the most amazing cuisine, but your beer is terrible. <laughs> Why is it that Korean beer is so terrible, and what is the government doing about it? What do you, what do you mean terrible? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we, I, I like, uh, I, I don't drink, uh, but uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, we have good water. Uh, I think uh, generally people love Korean beer, but I think uh, the the Sometimes you know people are thinking that we need more strong beer, <laughs> uh, but I think it depends on you know their taste or preference. <laughs> I was very diplomatic. Um, uh, Sarah, who's well, we, we know of course of of, uh, of kimchi and and suju. I could drink any night. Uh, who's handling our uh, microphones today? Okay, so there, there are two gentlemen that have portable microphones that can, can bring them round. Uh, I would invite you to raise your hands if you have a question. We'll start with the young lady in the third or fourth row here. And um, uh, please stand up and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Asuka. I work for EIR. Um, my question, oh, okay. My question is, well, if you take a, a little bit broader view on the Korean Peninsula, you, you have uh, U.S. policy of um, well, against China and Russia. This was made it clear by Ashton Carter, uh, as well as global prompt strike policy, which is to take out their first, uh, basically first strike policy to take out their uh, response capability. Now, so that's going on as a background, and I'm very concerned with the deployment of U.S. missile system in South Korea, TARD missile system, um, as well as, I think, the response from North Korea of developing nuclear weapon. I think they, they, they made it clear it's a response to U.S. policy. So I think that has to be a little bit discussed uh, here. And in this context, you also me mentioned this discussion about UN resolution. But as far as I got, Kerry and Wang both agreed that simply having a resolution is not enough. And especially Wang proposed to have six party talk again. And I think it's necessary. He also discussed the fact that you have to sort of have peace process going, the discussion and the peace talk, because North is not going, to, it, it's very clear, North Korea is not going to have, uh, to accept giving up of nuclear, uh, uh, development of nuclear bomb right now. They're very adamant about it and they're paranoid and I think it's, it, it's necessary to have 
peace through development. You mentioned the case of uh, Kaesong, but I think the North Korea have this city called Rason that could also be jointly developed. And you see, I think it, it's definitely coherent with President Park's point about Eurasian vision, where you seek greater collaboration with Russia and China. And therefore, I think, uh, what's your view in terms of South Korea really going for that kind of economic integration for Eurasia as opposed to going with U.S. policy of divide and conquer? Uh, that was a very provocative uh, series of statements and questions, and I'll leave you to it. Okay. Uh, regarding, first of all, uh, you know, missile defense and uh, some uh, resistance from uh, China and Russia uh, regarding, you know, recent uh, uh, movement of, you know, uh, missile defense system in South Korea. Uh, you know, I think we have to tackle this issue uh, in a more fundamental way. You know, what, what was the, you know, root cause of this problem? Uh, uh, maybe you heard that, you know, senior U.S. officials, uh, government officials said that, uh, I think uh, Kerry said that, you know, uh, if uh, there is no nuke in North Korea, uh, we don't need any this kind of, you know, uh, uh, terminal uh, missile defense system uh, in, in Korea. So, uh, you know, every problem is coming from the North Korea's uh, ambition to build uh, nuclear weapons uh, you know, in, in, the, in, in the country. So this, this was the starting point of, you know, any, uh, uh, you know, reaction, uh, you know, responses from Republic of Korea, obviously, you know, is, is a self-defense mechanism. And also, uh, uh, you know, inevitable and necessary uh, military readiness and, uh, you know, increase uh, strategic asset uh, so that uh, we have to, you know, cope with this, uh, you know, uh, unprecedented challenge of uh, nuclear and, and long-range missile uh, threat from North Korea. So I think uh, this is uh, what we have between uh, U.S. and Korea uh, alliance posture, you know, to address this issue. Uh, but, uh, you know, North Korea is always saying that, uh, you know, hostile policy of the United States, you know, uh, was the reason why they uh, had to develop these nuclear weapons. Uh, the hostile policy, they are always you know, saying for almost uh, four or five decades. Uh, but you know, there is no definition you know, what this hostile policy means uh, to, to, toward North Korea. You know, I, I uh, you know, because there is no point. You know, no, U.S. Uh, uh, reiterated many times, even you know, first uh, nuclear agreement in 1994. We call it agreed framework between uh, you know North Korea and United States, and also uh, there is a U.S. North Korea joint communique uh, in 2000. Um, there is very important document too, and also. Recently, six-party talks joint statement in 2005, right? So 1994, 2000, 2005, there are also many different occasions, you know, uh, U.S. pledged, you know, U.S. does not have any intention to invade or attack uh, to North Korea, and U.S. will respect, you know, sovereignty of, the, uh, of North Korea. You know, there is no point to invade or attack. Uh, but uh, I, I can say that you know this is a feeling of you know um, self vulnerability uh, on North Korea uh, because of you know their uh, you know regime internal uh, you know stability is is problematic and also uh, they are very weak in terms of you know economic or you know any uh, capability even though you know military even though they have. Uh, this nuclear uh, weapons of mass destruction, like uh, missile and, and nuclear, but in conventional, uh, you know, arms, they are very poor. You know, uh, they don't have any uh, enough resource to maintain and improve their, you know, uh, conventional arms system. So, uh, you know, they are.
but continue to try to put you know, this hostile policy of the United States to the international society so that they can get some excuse, you know, good pretext, you know, why they are developing uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, so this is a, you know, situation. I think we have to be careful, uh, you know, not to, uh, you know, deceived by uh, North Korea's, you know, propaganda on this, on this point. Regarding uh, the second point you mentioned about, you know, uh, how about we talk about you know six party talks on denuclearization. There are two two dimensions. One is a denuclearization talk with six party talks. The other one is, as I mentioned briefly, you know peace talk or peace regime talk. Uh, you know North Korea is trying to have between U.S. and and North Korea, but originally there was that should be done by you know directly related party, so called uh, two Koreas as well as China and United States. So we call it four-party four -party talks. That happened actually late 90s, you know, where I, I joined uh, at the time. Uh, we have a you know, previous experience. You know, the reason why China is trying to uh, even, you know, uh, North Korea is uh, insisting peace treaty between US and DPRK before, beforehand to talk about any other issues on uh, nuclear uh, uh, or missile uh, issue. Mm. The reason why uh, China is trying to put those two, uh, you know, meetings together, as uh, they call it, you know, parallel uh, meeting on denuclearization as well as peace talk, uh, because peace talk, you know, uh, in in seemingly that's very, uh, you know, attractive because we talk about peace, you know, but as I as I told you. This is a way of, you know, uh, by uh, China and United, uh, North Korea to, uh, you know, give fundamental question about, you know, security situation surrounding the Korean Peninsula. You know, they raised the issue of U.S. forces in South Korea and even, you know, alliance relations between South Korea and, and United States. And also, they are questioning uh, this kind of defensive uh, joint military exercise, as I mentioned. So uh, they would like to try to change, you know, the dimension of uh, uh, discussion from denuclearization toward uh, so-called peace discourse. Uh, so this is a typical way of, you know, uh, you know, evading their responsibility to abandon uh, nuclear weapons, uh, you know, capability. And they are trying to get certain, you know, recognition about their uh, uh, nuclear capability, nuclear status, as well as, you know, regime and leadership, you know, this is what they are trying to do. So I think we should be vigilant on that. Regarding final point, you know, possible uh, economic project in, in uh, you know, northern borderline between China and North Korea and Eurasia initiative that uh, our government and president uh, put forward. Uh, this is exactly what you want, you know, uh, with the, this is a Trans-Siberia, you know, pipeline, uh, which is quite important and good uh, to have a win-win situation in, you know, economic development and, you know, prosperity uh, uh, of this region. But unfortunately, North Korea is, is continuously, you know, uh, making uh, some difficult situation, uh, you know, where this Eurasia initiative or uh, any other, you know, economic free zone cannot, you know, moving ahead. Uh, so uh, this is really, you know, pity and uh, regrettable to see, to see this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. I'd like to come back to, to, to an observation about the role of China uh, in, in peninsular affairs. I, I, I've always wanted to believe that if China changed its posture toward North Korea, that reconciliation would be more likely. I, I, I sort of saw China as the fly in the ointment, both because as long as there's a back door to China. North Korea has some protection, has some resources. Uh, and I never saw it in the interest of China either for there to be reunification uh, of Korea or for the North Korean regime to collapse. 
quite the opposite. That's, that's and, and as long as their strategy, as long as they look at it from that point of view, what's the, the, the road forward? Yeah, uh, this is a really good question. I'd like to share with you uh, my thinking about uh, you know, China's uh, uh, you know, influence or role uh, in, in current situation surrounding the Korean Peninsula, as well as uh, you know, future possible you know, change, uh, including unification. You know, usually uh, people uh, you know, are saying that uh, China will continue to you know, stick current status quo surrounding the Korean Peninsula, and they don't want to uh, see you know, collapse of North Korea and uh, Korea will be united you know, by South Korea. Uh, and, you know, and, and they don't want to see you know, bigger uh, liberal uh, Korea together with the you know, uh, alliance relationship with the United States. Uh, this is a tradi you know, traditional uh, you know, thinking uh, of uh, all experts on Korean Peninsula. There is a sensible, you know, understandable in some sense. But recently, you know, this kind of continued provocation by North Korea, and uh, as I explained to you, I think this coming uh, new resolution will be really uh, almost, you know, surprising to everybody that how China agreed, you know, this kind of level uh, of, you know, toughness of new sanctions. So I think we believe that uh, China is thinking continuously and continuously that. Uh, you know, see North Korea as a just you know normal relationship with uh, just country and country, you know, uh, rather than giving any you know special, unique relationship uh, with uh, you know uh, China. So uh, I think uh, what they are trying to give uh, the message to North uh, North Korea is uh, um, with this new resolution. Uh, if you see it, is that uh, you know. Uh, North Korea, you you cannot you know and should not believe that China will protect you, you know uh, 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 whatever whatever you do you know like any provocation will be okay you know I don't think uh, 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 this is the message that China uh, would like to give to North Korea. So I think they are changing uh, you know slowly slowly, but I think quite clearly, you know. Uh, so they are feeling that North Korea is, is becoming liability rather than, you know, a set um, in terms of, you know, strategic point of view. So what we need, what, uh, you know, Republic of Korea and South Korea is doing is that, you know, we would like to approach, you know, two dimensions. First one is in, in I mean, the, in achieving unification. Uh, first one is principled approach. Second one is, uh, you know, practical approach. Principle approach is that uh, we Korean people, you know, was divided, as I said, you know, seven years ago, but without uh, expressing our will. That was done by, you know, outside power, you know, not, not our intention, right? And uh, uh, these two Koreas, Korean people, uh, should be united. Our, or based on our free will, you know, expression of free will. This is exactly what was, uh, you know, charter of the United Nations in Article 1, so-called self-determination. You know, any people, Korean people, Chinese people, or, you know, American people, any people, they have right to choose their, their own political and economic and social system. So, you know, their destiny should be decided by themselves, uh, same people. Uh, so this is, a, you know, principle of self-determination, one of the most important principles in international law, as well as a charter of the United Nations. So this, we, this is the, you know, theme uh, we would like to continuously, uh, you know, suggest to the international society. Uh, you know, at this moment, it's difficult to check, you know, North Korean people's uh, free will because uh, you know they are not free, but in case of any possible you know uh, situation in North Korea like you know collapse of leadership you know and and demise of you know system, then uh, we believe that 
we might have an opportunity to ask the free will of North Korean people about you know, their choice about their regime in the future. You know, like, uh, as you know, East and West German unification, the, the most important drive for the German unification was the, uh, the will, free will of uh, Eastern German people. You know, they decide to join you know, West Germany at the time. So this is really powerful principle. But as I said, you know, practical approach is also important you know, on top of this principled approach. Practical approach is to uh, explain to China that unified Korea could be you know, much better than current situation in terms of you know, diplomatic, because uh, there is no nuclear right, weapon, and uh, economic terms. Uh, you know, unified Korea will guarantee you know any investment or any transaction. Uh, so this will be you know another boom, uh, uh, special you know uh, uh, economic opportunity, or we call it you know bonanza uh, uh, in in this area. Uh, and also we will give them you know security assurance, like uh, you know there is no change of border, current border between North Korea and, and China. And the position of U.S. forces stationing in South Korea will be limited in you know, a certain area, in you know, a southern part of like a southern part of Han River or something like that. But there is many different uh, uh, security concerns that China can have. I think, uh, concerns. Maybe, <laughs> and we can address those uh, you know specific concern. Uh, but this this practical approach is also important. But what is more important thing is principled approach. So as, as you recently see, you know, Syrian case, right? Syrian crisis. And, but only uh, a proposition that everybody uh, should agree or you know, cannot but agree any other way is that the future of Syria, you know, including you know, Assad or problem, should be decided by you know, free will of Syrian people. So this is exactly what, it, what should be happening in, in the Korean Peninsula. You know, if there is some turmoil or collapse or contingency, and international society can say that, including United Nations, the you know, future of the Korean Peninsula should be decided by the free will of the Korean people. So this is uh, what we are trying to do. Let's take another question from the audience. Uh, the handsome gentleman on the uh, far right and then the young fellow in the front row. And please uh, introduce yourself. Um. Bonsoir et bienvenue. Merci. Um, you mentioned a lot about the military realities, but given the fact in the past 25, 30 years or so, uh, there is, you mentioned, the unification of Germany, the breakdown of the wall by Russia, uh, the downfall of communist Russia because they're gone more capitalistic. I don't know where, where they are today. Uh, the fact that the uh, United States gave up on North Vietnam, yet Vietnam is unified. Uh, the North obviously was communist. The whole thing became communist. Now it's all capitalist. What is South Korea doing vis-a-vis, -vis, for lack of a better term, propaganda? You mentioned the will of the people. In order to get to the will of the people, the people must be educated and aware. Now, I understand that there is an uh, iron fist controlling the messages in North Korea. But surely, in today's modern age, given that you have the likes of Samsung and Hyundai, you've got to be able to send some messages to North Korea and get the people to be aware of a lifestyle that they don't have. And the fact that you have 22 times uh, their wealth should be in and of itself appealing to them. What propaganda are you using? Uh, I, I don't want to uh, say you know, propaganda. Uh, what, what I'd like to use uh, you know, right term is to just to let them know what is happening in South Korea. You know? in terms of economic prosperity and uh, free and liberal democracy and the system that any 
any people or any you know like university students like you, any uh, young people can decide their future based on their you know competence, and and with with effort they can some you know uh, profit or earnings, and that will be protected. You know, this is a system uh, you know uh, we are uh, aiming you know in United States and Republic of Korea. Uh, that point is quite important, you know, uh, to uh, make North Korean people realize what is going on in South Korea, and uh, if if they have opportunity to choose the, the 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 system they want in the future, you know, I think uh, they are inclined to choose the South Korean you know terms or South Korean system. The one uh, interesting uh, you know uh, point is the Kaesong Industrial Complex I mentioned. In, there are uh, total North Korean workers of uh, 54,000 uh, North Korean workers. If we include uh, their immediate families, it, it could like uh, you know 200,000 or 300,000 people are watching every day in in the in the complex that they are seeing you know the advanced technology and the skill you know and prosperity of South Korea. So uh, this is a very important, you know, message to North Korean people uh, that their system is is something wrong. You know, uh, South Korean system is much advanced, and we need that kind of system in the future. You know, uh, so I think uh, this, uh, you know, permeating uh, way of uh, giving, uh, you know, message to North Korea is very uh, important and 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 working. I I think so. Secondly, uh, you know, recently, uh, even though North Korea is, you know, blocking all, you know, internet services, uh, communication, but it's difficult to, you know, block 100 percent because uh, if, if uh, like, you know, movie or drama or, you know, news from South Korea is really attractive, you know, to North Korean people, it's quite natural tendency that North Korean people would like to see it. Uh, there is a lot of testimony from uh, you know North Korean refugees who arrived in South Korea. They already saw you know many South Korean movie or drama uh, through you know small uh, we call it you know MP5. I'm not sure you heard about the MP5s. MP3 is uh, you know uh, listening music uh, device, but MP5 is a little bit bigger than this one. You know like uh, this one to see uh, you know video image with sound, uh, you know, one, this kind of uh, size can accommodate like more than 20 movies, you know, another 20 uh, uh, soap opera or Korean drama. Uh, so it was uh, uh, sometimes, you know, officially transferring to North Korea through a Chinese businessman or like a you know, gift or sometimes, you know, smuggling massively. And uh, it was really spread to you know uh, all uh, North Korean people. I, I think uh, uh, almost all, excepting some you know remote area in you know rural or you know mountain area. I think uh, almost all people understand what is going on in South Korea, and that they are feeling that you know uh, their system uh, is not working properly. Uh, and another way to communicate is is to, in my view, to increase you know humanitarian assistance. Uh, even though there is some concern about you know possible diversion of uh, uh, our food assistance to military purpose, but eventually uh, this continuous uh, humanitarian assistance, uh, particularly you know food area, is important. You know to to give another you know signal that. Uh, South Korea is the the country they can rely, you know, uh, 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 in the future. You know, I think uh, same brothers, sisters, and families. Eventually, uh, South Korea will will uh, embrace us. You know, I think this this sense is important. Uh, another way of you know uh, giving message to North Korea is. To, we have to deal, uh, I think, uh, uh, care, good care to the North Korean refugee who already arrived in South Korea. We have a total uh, around 30,000 North Korean refugees who arrived in South Korea successfully. 
And if, if uh, they are treated like you know, second level or third level citizen in, in South Korea, this uh, message will be transferred to North Korean uh, you know, families who are still in, in living in North Korea. So we have to embrace them and we have to give them you know, good care and you know, good job and good training or education uh, so that uh, you know, we, we can aim real, uh, genuine integration of two peoples. So uh, this is uh, exactly what we are doing. Uh, and also one uh, point uh, is really technical and you know, legal uh, approaches. I'm not sure you know, someone is uh, studying law. Uh, I'm not sure you heard about you know, transitional justice. Uh, transitional justice is uh, how we handle you know, accountability of you know, responsible people when there is you know, uh, uh, integration of two different countries or one, one country was occupied by you know, another one like uh, you know, apartheid situation in South Africa or even East and West Germany uh, unification. So there is uh, always you know, punishment system to uh, to ask you know, accountability of the you know, senior leadership of like North Korean situation. But if we uh, use this uh, transitional justice to, in a too strict way, uh, then it's difficult to, you know, uh, many multi-million North Korean people are engaged in public sector, you know, so-called like a party officials, security side, uh, you know, or, or military side. Uh, so I think uh, we have to give a sense of you know, embracing them, uh, like a middle or lower level of you know, government officials. Uh, so I think this is important you know, when they have an opportunity to be asked, uh, what is your choice you know, of system? If they got you know, free, uh, uh, an opportunity to express free will, then uh, it's important that you know, almost all North Korean people can say that we want South Korean system, you know. I think this mm -hmm. is uh, important. I, I'd like to stay with the subject of propaganda just, just for a couple minutes. Um, the North Korean government has uh, a media service that puts out press releases and announcements of all sorts, as, as all governments do. But the North Korean service specializes in personal attacks on other world leaders. And I won't repeat many of the things that they say. Um, this is the official government news agency. But they make fun of the shape of John Kerry's head. Um, and the man can't help it. Uh, they make fun of how Hillary Clinton dresses. Uh, the things that they say regularly about President Park are, are deeply disturbing. Um, rude beyond even Donald Trump level of, of rudeness. Um, your previous president was accused of looking like a rat. And it, it just goes on and on and on. And, and I wonder if there is any rhyme or reason to these sorts of declarations. Are they trying to be funny? Are they trying to get under the skin of their adversaries? Um, do they not know how to run a media service? W what do you think is happening there? <laughs> it's a very interesting question. Uh, uh, it's, it's difficult to understand you know, the mindset of North Korean people. Uh, we call it uh, North Korea is really you know, opaque society. Or well, sometimes you know, uh, you know, people or leadership, they have you know, paranoid or something like that. So, uh, you know, because they've been uh, living in, in such a really unique society, you know, like uh, uh, some, some people are saying that it's almost, you know, a religion, you know, a, a sect uh, in a very extreme way. You know, in, in uh, North Korea, there is like, uh, you know, protected uh, with their own system or, or way of thinking uh, with the so-called you know, uh, ideology, which is uh, you know, uh, self-reliance, uh, 
uh, or their own unique, you know, mindset uh, by the leadership, you know, Kim Il Sung at, at the founder. So it's it's quite unique, you know, and also uh, increased, you know, sense of so-called threat from our side. So they are very, uh, you know, depressed. Um, it's it's difficult to understand them as as a, our normal, you know, sense, <laughs> as a common sense. Uh, so uh, someone is saying that you know North Korea has its own uh, you know rational or, or reasoning or you know they are behaving in a reasonable way uh, according to their world you know uh, viewpoint you know uh, so uh, this is you know discrepancies uh, we we can face uh, in in their wording. In, in everyday criticizing, you know, South Korean uh, president, uh, really, uh, you know, it's, it's just a ridiculous way. You know, it, it seems very childish. <laughs> exactly, level. yeah. Uh, so this is, you know, expressing or demonstrating their, I, I believe, vulnerability, uh, you know, sense of, you know, isolation. Uh, they are in, in, in cornering, you know, in, in really, uh, they got sense of you know uh, vulnerability or you know uh, so depression you know uh, so it's difficult to understand them but uh, the point i mentioned you know uh, the free will of you know korean people is quite important because when uh, we see a lot of north korean refugees who are arriving in south korea uh, there is some program in in south korean television that you know, assembling those refugees and have talk show and and after like uh, two three years uh, after they arrive in South Korea, we don't feel any difference. You know, uh, they are, they talk quite you know frankly and you know and smiling and you know and joking. Uh, so I think uh, you know people Korean people are same. Uh, but uh, as I told you. The, the 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 system, you know, uh, North Korean communist system made people uh, to behave in that way, you know, eventually for like a five, six, or seven decade. In 1947, after you know independence in 1945 in in the Korean Peninsula, uh, United Nations General Assembly adopted first resolution related to Korean issue. They call it Korean question. Uh, to uh, support, you know, uh, independent and uh, democratic sovereign state by the Korean people. There was first uh, resolution, but unfortunately, around that time, there is a struggle, you know, of uh, occupied communist in northern part and, you know, democratic uh, uh, preparation in, in South Korea. But unfortunately, there is no, you know, possible unification, you know, process. Then, uh, Republic of Korea, South Korea, declared, uh, you know, establishment of uh, government in 1948, you know, August uh, 15, based on free election, right? Uh, with the democratic, you know, uh, constitution. And after that, in two or three months later, in 1948, United Nations General Assembly adopted a second resolution on Korean question uh, by recognizing Republic of Korea only lawful government on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, you know the reason why? It was free will was expressed uh, by the people you know, on that part of country. So this is uh, one single important criteria, you know, why UN recognized Republic of Korea as a, as a sole and lawful government on the Korean Peninsula. On the other hand, DPRK, you know, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea, declared their own government in just uh, one month later, you know, of the same year, 1948. But, you know, UN, did not listen to their uh, allegation, you know. There is no any adoption by the United Nations uh, to recognize North Korean government. You know the reason why? There is no 
expression of free will of the people. So this is really important criteria. That's, that is the reason why after two years in 1950, North Korea attacked uh, you know, South Korea with the you know, uh, armed forces. Uh, UN immediately assembled the Security Council adopt resolution to uh, you know, condemn. Uh, they used you know, North Korean forces not DPRK, you know, because uh, they didn't recognize North Korea as a lawful government. Now, now, wasn't it the case that the Chinese were absent from that Security Council? Uh, Russia was absent. Russia was yeah, absent. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there was a situation, and uh, um, until like uh, uh, mid seventies, in every year there is adoption on Korean question, but you know, every time they use the free and independent sovereign state by the Korean people. That was uh, the, the objective of the United Nations on, on Korean question and Korean people. But unfortunately, that was not possible because of you know, two government. In 1991, two Koreas joined the United Nations, right, as you know. At the time, uh, we didn't, uh, even though uh, South Korea and North Korea, with the name of ROK and DPKL, submitted application to join the United Nations, but uh, Security Council merged you know, two applications in with one single resolution, mm -hmm. I think uh, which represents quite a unique uh, you know, situation. That uh, This is an implication that you know, two Koreas are quite unique. You know, uh, UN, uh, you know, did not accept as as a two separate, you know, country uh, in in as as a as a you know temporary political arrangement, you know, to uh, go to the you know eventual unification in the future. Uh, this is my reading. So I think the first resolution in 1947, and continued the resolution up until 1955, uh, 75 still effective, you know, remain effective. I think eventually in the future, we don't know when and how, but uh, it'll happen, you know, in the future with the free expression of free will of whole uh, people in the Korean Peninsula. Let's take another question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Nathan Cho, I'm from Korea. Um, my question is about like relationship between North Korea and South Korea, even beyond um, high um, high up peaceful talk. Um, whether South Korea helps North Korea or have sanction against North Korea, North Korea continues to develop nuclear bomb, nuclear development, and also they made always provocative action against South Korea. So it seems like meaning is to have. Um, peaceful talk or higher level talk between South Korea and North Korea. So like um, in this point of view, I think in my opinion, um, Pres um, President Park um, uh, administration tends to have sanction uh, economically and politically against North Korea, including gas and industrial complex. So I think it's inevitable, I think, to, ha to stop the peaceful talk with North Korea. But I think uh, the reason behind this um, policy of President Park is to have, um, to expect that North Korea will collapse or overthrown in the future or in the foreseeable the future. So I'm just curious about that, if there is any um, possible um, plans or backup plans when it comes to North Korea's collapse or overthrown situation. Um, and also plus, as far as you know, um, as you say, um, self-determination is very important. But um, as far as you know, I heard when it comes to ceasefire after the Korean War, I heard there's um, main actors of this that agreement, peaceful treaty, was China and United States and North Korea, whereas South Korea is not there. As far as I don't know if it's right, but um, if it's so, if so. Um, is there any um, backup plan to deal with um, North Korea's collapse? Because Korea, South Korea has a kind of weakness of dealing with this em emergency because they don't have any, I don't know, like um, act active main right 
um, in the international society. Thank you. And that will have to be our last question, so let's make it count. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the, you know, signatory of the armistice agreement is, uh, you know, generally known that uh, the, the commander of the, uh, you know, fighting force from each party was, uh, you know, signing the actual agreement. Uh, you know, Chinese uh, uh, people's, uh, you know, uh, army as well as uh, North Korea's uh, army uh, and the United States, you know, representing uh, U UN forces. So uh, the reason why South Korea was not signing, you know, is not because of, you know, we are not a direct related party, but, you know, this is our land, you know, we are fighting together. But uh, uh, United States at that time uh, representing, you know, UN forces, uh, you know, 16 uh, countries are joining uh, UN forces, and uh, we regard, you know, uh, Korea could be uh, one, one part of that uh, UN uh, forces, you know, all together. So U.S. signed, you know, uh, representing, you know, all other uh, participating country. Uh, the fact that uh, we already had the four-party talks, you know, in uh, late 90s, two Koreas and China, uh, United States, uh, is clearly, uh, you know, showing that uh, South Korea is, uh, you know, a genuine party of any discussion on uh, armistice agreement or peace agreement. Uh, regarding, uh, you know, a possible collapse or, or, or any contingency plan by South Korea, uh, you know, we, we don't, as I said, we don't aim to, you know, disrupt the North Korean situation any, with any, you know, policy or any assertive uh, way, uh, but uh, we, we should be, uh, be ready uh, to, you know, cope with any possible change in North Korea, you know, because uh, this is a, uh, you know, very important stake for South Korea, you know. So, uh, of course, you know, we are thinking and we are planning in many different, uh, you know, preparation in terms of, you know, diplomatic side as well as, you know, military uh, side uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, domestic integration side. Uh, we will do our best uh, in that way. Um, Taking this opportunity, can I talk Please. a little bit, you know, global citizenship or UN Academy? Is yes, that, is that what, absolutely. Okay, okay. Uh, because I'm, I'm talking about too much about, you know, Korean uh, security issue. Uh, but actually, uh, one part of what I was trying to say, we, you know, share with you is, uh, you know, United Nations, um, you know, important work is going on. And as I said, uh, you know, peace, security, development, and, and human rights, right? And, you know, Interesting enough, you know, Korean question is related to all three par parties together. You know, we are we are talk about really serious, you know, peace security issue, and uh, uh, considering you know this uh, uh, miraculous uh, development of nuclear, uh, I mean, the economic uh, prosperity, will give another you know example, you know, uh, relationship between uh, one country vis-a-vis -vis United Nations, and also human rights aspect. But uh, let me uh, share with you uh, you know role of universities you know academia uh, in the process of United Nations. Um, I, I noticed that you know you should be proud of uh, you know Fairlight Dickinson University around uh, five years ago, uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon uh, you know announced an initiative so called United Nations Academic Impact UNAI. Uh, this is a global university network uh, to promote all UN-related, uh, you know, uh, charter or purpose or causes uh, throughout, the, you know, around the world. So uh, at the time, uh, I heard that then president of, uh, you know, Fairlight Dickinson uh, was the, you know, uh, president of uh, Inter International Association of, you know, all president of, uh, you know, universities around the world. And he proposed to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to make certain kind of you know, academic uh, global network initiative. Uh, so uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon accepted that one. And uh, this is uh, five years 
-hmm. you know, kids at the time, uh, starting from 2010. Uh, you know, Korea, together with other countries, is promoting UN academic impact because academia uh, and like higher education, like university, is quite important in promoting so-called sustainable development goal for next 15 years. Right? We call it we call it 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. There are 17 goals, but among many different you know goals, I can. Uh, choose four different area you know first one is global citizenship i'm not sure you heard about global citizenship or global citizenship education you know education is uh, usually uh, dedicating to uh, be equipped you know with a certain you know skill or you know know how to uh, get a job or something like that right very practical or you know way but in global citizenship education is focusing on how students can be prepared you know uh, in in dealing with all complex uh, issues uh, you know uh, globally like uh, human right and climate change or violent extremism or terrorism you know intolerance and also how we can you know promote diversity and mutual respect and understanding so this is uh, what uh, global citizenship is all about. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Professor Korja is an expert on that area. And the uh, UN, you know, uh, with the leadership of the Republic of Korea, we are trying to promote this area. You know, because this is a fundamental approach and solution toward uh, you know, violent extremism in, you know, everywhere in the, in the world. Uh, because Sometimes you know the many uh, you know people are recruiting by IS uh, or ISIL is uh, really you know higher high educated people, right? So uh, what is important at this moment is is not level of education, it's orientation of education. You know, uh, so this is uh, what you are uh, promoting and UNAI, uh, and uh, this is first important. You know objective we can we can choose that kind of thing is entrepreneurship you know and as you know uh, your one of the most important goal is you know to do business you know open your uh, uh, business but we can talk about you know uh, not just uh, uh, money chasing you know entrepreneurship we need a responsible entrepreneurship we need a inclusive entrepreneurship Inclus inclusive entrepreneurship means that we have to help you know the students in developing country to know uh, how they can open their business in in most difficult situation in Africa, you know, and in Middle East and South America. Third one is uh, technology-based knowledge sharing. I'd like to say in that way. Uh, in university, you have a lot of you know good technology, IT, or, or you know web uh, site, or even satellite. Uh, you have to share your uh, contents and knowledge uh, to the you know uh, difficult people in in uh, developing countries. Uh, final one is uh, uh, you know uh, climate change and environment uh, environmental challenge. So uh, university can provide a lot of you know solution and know how how you know we can tackle this uh, climate change issue. So. Those uh, four areas is a focused area, I can say. Uh, so I encourage you know uh, many con uh, universities around the world, including uh, Fairlight Dickinson University, because uh, this is uh, UNAI is uh, your child. So uh, we we can work together to make this world you know really peaceful and uh, uh, and and prosperous. Uh, as I said, SDG, you know, this is my you know, almost concluding uh, remarks. SDG, we, we talk about, you know, important slogan is uh, no one leave behind. This is a really overarching slogan. Uh, this is a help, you know, people in need, you know, people in isolated, marginalized, and, you know, vulnerable people to come up with, to enjoy, you know, same level of prosperity, same level of, you know, justice, 
uh, eventually, I do one word I can uh, say, what is the ultimate goal of this SDG and the whole process of United Nations is eventually to promote you know, human dignity. Uh, this should be our ultimate goal. SDG, even we talk about North Korean situation, right? North Korean people you know, in dire humanitarian situation, they have their own human dignity to be uh, protected and uh, restored and, and, and you know, protected, uh, preserved in the future. So uh, I think uh, this is our you know, situation of, you know, uh, around the world. You have your own dignity and you know, other people have their own dignity you know, to respect those dignity through global citizenship education as well as you know to help you know humanitarian situation as well as uh, as you as you recently see, you know migration situation coming from Syria to you know Europe uh, so I think uh, uh, all those phenomena I think uh, our ultimate goal should be uh, you know restore uh, and protect uh, human dignity this is exactly what UN Charter is saying you know they are starting with the people. You know, and blah blah blah. So uh, you know, <laughs> this is what I like to carry uh, one with me. So people first, uh, and uh, people centered. I think uh, our ultimate goal should be, uh, you know, restoring uh, human dignity. So I hope that in in sometime in the future, uh, together with you, I'd like to see, you know, North Korean people also. Uh, to, to their dignity could be uh, recovered, you know, uh, properly and perfectly. Thank you so much. I think uh, Ambassador Han and I could do this all night, um, but I won't impose. Uh, thank you so much for coming, and please join me in thanking Ambassador Han.